topic and it is the topic of the measure in the context of treasure. We have been um, talking a lot about standards and values and all things connected with evaluation and today more than at any time that uh, I remember in my life we need discussion about the right measure of things. Today I was watching an incredibly beautiful Periscope broadcast from uh, Machu Picchu Museum and um, it's um, a, a place that uh, was built a long time ago uh, before Latin America was created in the way we have it today. and. Um, the broadcast focused on amazing architecture. Of course, now they are only ruins, but you can see the precision, the amazing uh, knowledge of the right measurement that was used to build those um, structures high up in the mountains. So uh, we have terraces and pathways um, through the mountains. So obviously our ancestors knew a lot about the right measurement of things. Measure is a concept that is as ancient as human life and civilization. And somehow today people forget about its significance and they act on feelings. But feelings and measures are two different categories. So let's see what uh, our wonderful Wikipedia talks about in that context of um, treasure. And here we have the definition of treasure. Uh, and in, um, in the ancient times, um, a treasure uh, was called Teza Uros, uh, Greek uh, uh, meaning treasure store, Romanized as Thesaurus, is a concentration of riches, often those that originate from ancient history and um, some of that um, uh, heritage from the past is considered lost and or forgotten until rediscovered. And some jurisdiction um, legally define what constitutes treasure, such as the British Treasure Act of 1996. So you see um, in this um, tremendous um, definition of treasure that it is connected with uh, containing something um, that is of value uh, because if something is not considered of value it's not considered treasure it's discarded so tr the concept of treasure is one of the great um, um, helps that helps us divine what is the right measure of value 
and um, there's a lot of articles, um, there are many articles on internet around matters of treasure and um, we hear just, you see, tr uh, contents talk about treasure hunting, buried treasure, treasure maps, copper scroll, pirates and ships, other media and social network, literature, film and television. So there's a lot that uh, is discussed about the treasure, but treasure by definition is connected with the concept of storage, storing something. And there are many things that we have in our possession that have been stored as treasure from thousands of years ago. Um, there are many things that continue to be stored as treasure, as um, something of extremely important value. And we attach special, special significance to it. Uh, we have um, an amazing uh, uh, building in Turkey called Santa um, Sofia, Sofia, Hagia Sofia, built um, by uh, one of the uh, Caesars of Roman Empire, who, which at that time was moved to Constantinople, today we call Constantinople Istanbul. But this uh, building is of such great value that it is treasured by Christians and by Muslims. It's, it's treasured, it's considered um, a building that is a sign of God's presence on earth. And this building is also treasured by the Turkish government. It has a lot of support, a lot of help um, in conservation. So this is a treasure that is um, acknowledged as having values for diverse cultures. There are many treasures in other places that um, have that value officially recognized. There are treasures that um, are only known to local communities or local families, but um, all people on earth know the meaning and value of treasure. Treasure can be at the global level, at the national level, at the regional level, at the personal level, at family level. There are some people who have huge uh, houses storing treasure, there are other people who have just a few belongings that they treasure is very important, but we all have this innate ability to acknowledge that something is of value. And the question is that the, the definition of treasure varies from culture to culture, and it is because of differences in how we measure what is valuable, what is important. And a lot of conflict in today's world is around um, conflict around the measure the, the, the concepts of measure, how to measure success, how to measure something that um, that should be uh, kept as individual secret, how to measure uh, innocence, how to measure guilt, how to measure achievements of a nation or a family or um, a group of nations. So we have a lot of discussions about that um, question of measure. In my personal life, I had um, a, a, a conflict around measure because I was born in perfect measure. I was even offered to go to a ballet school. And, and then something really bad happened. Um, when I was in my 20s, there was a car accident and my body um, was distorted. The, the, um, there was a, a, a lasting damage in the shape and measure of um, of uh, my right limb and I couldn't walk normally 
and then I prayed to God and one day Holy Spirit came on me with full power and gave me this revelation that if I want to have the right measure in my body I have to look at Jesus Christ of Nazareth presence in human body as my standard as my measure and as soon as I understood this in faith I was instantly healed and the right length in the two limbs was restored and I understood at that moment that that wound that I had for so many years, the wound about the the wrong measure being imposed on my body by bad um, event, bad accident, was distorted, it was distorted and the only remedy was to connect to the right measure standard of God himself and to have God define my destiny, destiny of divine grace rather than destiny of misfortune. So those two things happened in my life that helped me understand how important it is to ask God for good fortune, to avoid a lot of unnecessary um, bad uh, events, tragedies, those that can be avoided, and then secondly, how to connect and apply measure of God to our lives because He can repair things in nature that nature itself cannot deal with without divine intervention. And a lot of us today are dealing with conflict around the issues of measure in social interactions, especially around finances and relationships. And I was thinking that that is an area that is connected with how we define treasure, what is valuable. And one of the ways in which I'm going to help myself and help you uh, to deal with this is to get more faith on the standards of God in social measures, social me measures of achievement, of praise, and also how to perceive the system of justice as the place which also should have the right measure of praise and um, punishment when it's necessary because today we have a very strange situation in which system of justice is disconnected from system of praise and system of justice is really used only to punish or to prevent punishment, but never to praise. Uh, the most extreme example of this is uh, a court that was um, created in Brussels that is called a uh, criminal court. Uh, how can you have a court that is only focused on guilt? So as we see a lot of strife today in, uh, in the workplaces, um, I understood that we don't have the relational understanding of how to apply the right measures in the context of places that create treasure like workplaces, companies, all kinds of businesses. Um, and I think that we have to look at this very seriously because a lot of people have been destroyed or destroyed themselves under pressure of 
um, false accusations or, or sentences of guilt, even if guilt really did happen, but then the punishment seemed to be only destruction of the person's life, even for the most uh, trifle um, accidents or mistakes or, or breaches of the law. So I thought that that is not the right way to teach people that the only way to get justice is by creating a group that imposes justice and then the receivers of those sentences have only one sentence which is um, destruction of their life and property. So we have to look into the system of justice from the perspective of a place that should have ability to distinguish what is treasure in a particular case, what is the right measure of the treasure and what is something that is a crime and then within the context of what is a crime how to apply punishment that would fit that crime and how not to destroy a person but how to give an individual opportunities to make amendments to make it right, to have his or her life guided in a better direction and how to give people uh, chances to uh, have turnarounds because this is what our God teaches us. When I was deformed, he didn't punish me for this because it didn't look right, but he brought in miraculous healing. So when we are dealing today with a lot of conflict around relationships in workplaces, we shouldn't simply destroy people who are accused, but we should look at the whole context of workplace and create measures that would continue the existence of the treasure that those workplaces create. Treasure in this context as storages of value. Because, for instance, if we have a beautiful store and one person in this store has um, a romantic relationship with an employee. If someone comes in and wants to destroy the entire store, all the value created, all the um, uh, jobs that other people have in that store, all the uh, suppliers, all the people who make things that um, are sold in the store, then we create a situation that one minor relationship destroys huge treasure and value for other people. So those who think that they create justice actually create massive injustice uh, among innocent people who have absolutely nothing to do with that situation. So now we have a situation of that massive destruction in Hollywood we really shouldn't try to impose misfortune of a few on everybody else and destroy good fortune that created treasure that often comes from many generations. In other words, we need to restore in the system of justice and in the system of government the concept of the right measure 
and the concept of treasure that shouldn't be destroyed by a, a single crime or by some people making mistakes around um, certain places or in certain places. If we don't do this, the whole marketplace will become desolated desert. There will be nothing there because not one single person can withstand that kind of pressure. So I encourage us to rethink the entire image of the system of justice and government and rulemaking and to reintroduce into this ruling a system that would wisely deal with everything that we deal in political and social life from the point of view of treasure and the right measure. Around the matters of bad fortune, I've dealt with this and I understand that sometimes the only way to have bad fortune disappear is by God's grace to give us his good fortune. And that is what I'm asking God for us, that he will restore our good fortune and that, that his light and life that comes with this divine destiny will bring in his vision of peace and his vision of justice that would be able to restore within us a sense of value, treasure and the right measurement. And that our perceptions and eyes will focus on good fortune and not to focus on trying to destroy somebody's life because of something bad that that person did in the past. And I think that this is the way to go. And this is the way that will bring supernatural healing to us that will restore joy in our hearts because there is nothing worse than getting justice and having someone destroyed and then having the destruction come to the heart of the victim and create hopelessness there. So in order for us to regain good fortune in our hearts, we have to ask God to show us the right way and to give us his blessing from kingdom of God and to bring in light to our intelligence that we can create systems of justice that really are just, that look at matters of interaction between people in terms of praise, um, in terms of clearing people who are innocent, in terms, in terms of uh, punishing those who are guilty, but in the punishing with the right measure, not excessively. And we have to ask God for divine vision of government that will have love at the center of communication and decision making around matters of treasure and value. I think that when we have 
love, divine love, dis uh, uh, displayed in our conversations, in our decision making, then by the very nature of love we will create more beautiful connection between people and will restore the life that societies lack if they constantly focus on destructive conflicts. And I think that creation of that loving interaction in our governments and in social media is more important than anything else because that is the source of our interaction with each other on other matters. If we don't know how to lovingly connect with each other in politics and in our neighborhoods, then everything else will only be a temporary solution that will not bring stability. So in closing, I already thank God for restoring my good fortune and for restoring the good fortune of our, our um, uh, destinies and that we are entering now wonderful time of divine love.